You ain't gonna hear any better singing than that from anybody, from the Rolling Stones to Ray Charles. Hallelujah. That is some good stuff right there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Boy, I tell you what, I'm ready to preach tonight. I've had to sit in misery for two nights and have the anointing stirred up in me and get all these preaching thoughts, and I couldn't say nothing. And so, uh, amen, we might be here a while today, but there's victory in the house. And, uh, oh, what can wash away my sins? Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, what can make me whole again? Oh, nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount I know nothing but the blood of Jesus hallelujah you're clean right now because of the blood of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah amen amen well, I was just sitting there today thinking because, you know, we're in this building program and it's trying to kill me, literally. But we're going to be triumphant. But, and I don't, I don't know if it's possible, but I think it'd be really cool if we could make a human chain around the outside of that building. Every hand join. Hi up 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 by Sunday. Hallelujah. And declare that this is not the enemy's ground. Praise God. Hallelujah. There is something explosive that God has determined is going to come out of that place and every demon in hell has risen its head to try to stop us from getting into this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So in the name of the Lord, we declare it. In the name of Jesus, we declare it that every dollar that the enemy is holding back is released today in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That every million dollars that we need is being released in the name of Jesus that the house of the Lord is not going to sit unfinished. God, you said birds would not fly in and out of that house as a sign that we couldn't do it. But in the name of the Lord, we declare that our sanctuary is finished in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Well, before you're seated, I want to say it's great honor to have uh, Brother Randy Hill with me and Brother Timothy Dixon and uh, thank you for the tent. And I, I, last night as I was sitting and I was just thinking it'd be really neat to, uh, it's been years since I've seen a five-day revival, but I'd like to see like five consecutive nights under a tent in this city somewhere and just, just pull out all the stops. Did you notice that the liberty and the freedom that is under a tent it's just like the restrictions are lifted off. You know, it's almost like the devil doesn't know what to do with a tent. He can do something with a, a, a closed-in structure, but you get him in a tent and it knocks him off balance. Amen. So it's going to be a marvelous time uh, while you're still standing. So we'll read our verse. I'm just going to read one verse and... Um, we're just going to take off by the Holy Ghost and see what the Lord wants to say. This is out of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. I do want to say thank you, Jasmine and Burton, for that song. Um, that song just does something to me. 
when I'm in my gym working out, I've got Jasmine's CD, and I'll just fast forward, and I think it's the number seven. Makes me stronger, makes me lift easier. Hallelujah. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Now, Lord, I thank you that what you have already determined in heaven to be spoken is going to be released in the earth, in this atmosphere. Holy Ghost, you have filled me with an utterance. God, you've anointed me to release this word today. And Lord, we declare that because of this word that's going to be released, strongholds are going to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Liberty is going to be proclaimed. Clarity will come to our spirits. And the kingdom of God will be advanced. In the name of the Lord, we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. This, of course, is the first chapter of the Beatitudes. And Jesus finds himself on this mountain, and he's looking out, and there is this massive amount of people, and he feels this pulling from them for him to speak. And so Jesus begins to, to talk to them. And as he's looking at, at, at this group of people, of course, I think it's Matthew 5, 6, and 7 that uh, is the, the entire summary. But just to extrapolate for a moment from the first, at the very beginning, before Jesus begins to get into the Beatitudes, as he's looking to this group of people, he could not help himself. And he looked at them and he said, I name you salt. He looked at him and he said, you are the salt of the earth. It's an amazing thing to be named by God. When God was going to do great things, he would name them. He named John the Baptist. Heaven named Jesus. And he, when he starts off in the book of Genesis, the Bible says he looks at the adversary that has to be removed. And he says, I name darkness, I name you night. And God names salt on them. But then he, he begins to make some statements. He says, I name you, you are the salt of the earth. But he says, if salt loses its savor, its effectiveness, he says, it's no longer good for anything. He said, and the consequences are that it is thrown out. And when it's thrown out, he said, the feet of men trample on it. Salt is um, it's essential for life, the minerals in it. it. It makes everything taste good. And in the human body, too much salt can mess you up. It can give you high blood pressure. It can do different things. But I can tell you this. You can't have too much salt in the spirit. Because when the Lord looked at that group of people, he was looking prophetically at the church. And he said, you are what prevents corruption in the earth because God loves the earth I think it's Psalms 115 says this that the heavens are the Lord's but the earth he has given unto the sons of men God gave the earth to men as a gift 
He's still the Lord of heaven and earth. Heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. But he said, I'm giving you the earth. He said, but I'm warning you, there is a corruption that wants to get in the earth. Why? Because it says this, that God has named the nations as the inheritance of you and I. And whatever God gives us something, the devil wants to mess it up. It's taken centuries for India to become so entrenched in idolatry. It took centuries for China, thousands of years for China to evolve to where they are. It's taken about 20 years for the United States to fall into the corruption that it's in. You talk about speed. It's taken three years, but hallelujah, God is the God of suddenlies. And he has declared this, that you and I, the church, is the salt of the earth. There is no other solution. There is no answer in AI. There is no answer in politics. There is no answer in philosophies of Eastern religions. Uh, Nothing will ever bring peace. Uh, Nothing will ever make the devil stop in his tracks and turn and run uh, until this nation, hallelujah, has a church uh, that is without spot, wrinkle, or blemish uh, that goes back to the old paths, uh, seeking the ancient ways uh, and the ancient of days. And when you crown him king of kings and lord of lords, God said that you lose a salt effectiveness in the earth. The world should have never affected the church. Food doesn't affect salt. Salt affects food. And it doesn't take very much. You put just a little too much salt on that food, and you know I just put too much salt on this food. You can't eat it because it has such powers of effectiveness. That's why the Lord called us a little flock. See, we start thinking in terms that we need millions of people to change the world. God says, no, if a little leaven can leaven the whole lump, then a little bit of salt can change a nation, an environment, and a culture. When you release a church, hallelujah, that is full of the power of God, overnight things begin to change by the power of the Lord. First Peter talks about it, says this, that the devil is trying to eat us. Says he's seeking whom he may devour. But you put some salt in it. (laughs) Hallelujah. God didn't say we had a little salt. He said you are salt. You stick a tablespoon of salt in your mouth, and the first thing you're going to do is, I can't eat this, and you're going to spit it out. It's amazing to me that we've had so little effect in us on the enemy that he eats us and he likes us. Not only that, the Bible said you take on his eating habits because Paul said we are now devouring one another. God is saying, I need you to reverse his cannibalism, and I need you to get a hold of the devil that when he puts you in his mouth and says, I'm going to eat you up, that all of a sudden he goes, oh, I can't handle this. There's salt in this thing. What is salt? It is the nature of God. When the church becomes salt, she changes the world. She changes the colleges. She changes the hospitals. She changes the political system. It's not that first. It's the church. (laughs) 
We ought to be making the devil spit us out of his mouth. We should not be afraid of the enemy. The Lord's been talking to me about this week. When God created us, he created us in our dimension that the enemy should be afraid of us. Yes. Hallelujah. That not when he sees us, he goes, I'm going to engage him in battle. But the moment he sees us, the Bible says, he turns and runs. James says, I believe it's James, says, submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil. And what? He shall flee from you. The problem is we got too many believers that are running from the devil instead of the devil running from us. I want to put such a fear of God in the enemy's heart that when he sees me from a distance, when he sees me walk upon the platform, when he sees me open the Bible, when he sees you hit your your knees in your bedroom when he sees you raise your hands in the middle of praise that he says oh I've got to get out of here and run for my life why because we are the salt of the earth see salt the Lord says that it's no longer effective when it loses its savor, it, it's the ability to affect whatever it's put on. And it's interesting, you know, it's almost a play on words, is savor, but you could also say savior. Salt loses its effectiveness when it loses its savor and when it loses Jesus. The thing about salt, I, I got on the internet and did some study on it. Salt can lose its effectiveness and still not change its appearance. You can't tell by looking at it that if you put it on your food, it isn't going to change the way your food tastes. It still looks like salt. It still feels like salt. It still, it may have a little discoloration. It may be clumped up a little bit. In fact, one of the things that makes salt lose its savor is it gets dehydrated. This is why Jesus said, I am the living water. Hallelujah. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. No wonder the church got dried up. How many times we heard say, I feel so dry. Well, it's because you got away from the living well. When out of your belly is flowing rivers of living water, you're not going to talk about how dry I feel, how discouraged I feel, how the devil's camped out in my house. But when you got salt, hallelujah, that's been mixed with the living water, you are going to affect your environment. Hallelujah. 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 The boldness of God. We release it in this house today. I release the boldness of God. Oh, I tell you, if the enemy thinks this church project is going to knock us off of our feet, I got news for him. You better come up with a better weapon than this because we got faith that what God promises that he's also able to perform. We will not back down. Uh, we will not sell this property. Uh, we will not cave in. Uh, we will not throw in the towel. Uh, but we will declare uh, that we are the salt of the earth. Uh, we're going to change Rivergate. We're going to change Goodlettsville. Uh, we're going to change Nashville. So when Salt loses its savor, but you can't tell by looking at it. So there's a verse that mirrors this. Have any form of godliness, but no power. Churches that don't have salt, that has savor, just become entertainment centers. 
some of this generation that's been pulled said this, young married couples. They said, we want to go back to church, but we don't want to go back to the church that our parents went to because it's dead. So they're looking for a church that has salt. Hallelujah. That when even before church started, you know how many times I've had people tell me, Pastor Kent, we come to visit the church, and when we walk through the door, church hadn't even started. When we walk through the door, I started crying. Because I could feel the presence of the Lord. What is it? That's salt. Over the years, I've had so many people come into our home and go, oh, my, I feel such peace here. Why? Because we pray all the time. Hallelujah. We guard the environment. We don't watch porn in our house. We don't get drunk in our house. We don't smoke joints in our house. We don't get mad at each other and slap and then curse each other and kick the dog. No, sir, we have created an environment of the presence of the Lord where there's peace in the atmosphere. And some of us, hallelujah, needed to go back and quit saying, I got the form of godliness, but there's no power. There ought to be so much anointing on your house and on your property that when the mailman puts his hand in your mailbox, he goes, what is that? Hallelujah. That's the Holy Ghost that is affecting him by the Spirit of God. My God, I feel the Spirit of the Lord today. God is declaring to you that you have a DNA in you where you can affect the enemy. Everybody wants to know, how did this nation get in the mess that it's in? Well, it's right in the scriptures. It's in this verse. He said, salt that loses its ability to affect its environment is no longer good for anything. I mean, think about it. When you come to church, the only reason for us to come together is to edify Christ. Because if we're not going to edify Christ, you know, we don't have any ballet going on up here. We're not going to show a movie. There's no country concert that's going to go on. You know, we're not going to have a presentation of um, how to be more successful in business. Our only purpose for coming together is to exalt Jesus Christ. The moment that you change the mandate of the house. Hallelujah. This is what Andy Stanley doesn't understand. Is that God raised the church up. Not to bring peace between the father and sin. But to bring deliverance between man and the enemy. I got news for you. I don't care how many degrees you have, how many PhDs you have, how many books you've wrote. You do not have the authority to alter the written scripture of the Lord. I don't care how much money you got. You can rewrite the rules and say adultery doesn't matter in 2023. But when the dust settles and we're standing before God, heaven and earth shall pass away. But the word of God lives and abides forever. Salt, salt, salt. May God raise up the house of the Lord to affect a generation. So now, Barnes, or uh, George Barna, I think it is, who does the assessment of how people view ministry and churches and all of that. One of their polls is, is that people have more confidence in used car salesmen than they do preachers. I guess that's why so many used car salesmen used to be preachers. I don't know. <laughs> but the Lord said this. He said, when... 
the church stops affecting its culture. And this is what we're dealing with right now. We're hearing it, cultural change. But the enemy has come out of the closet, not, not speaking homosexually wise. The enemy is no longer afraid to unveil its agenda. For decades, the enemy has tried to infiltrate society, but do it in clandestine because they knew that it's so bizarre and so abrupt and so different that if anybody gets a whip of what I really want, they would put the brakes on it right there. But now the enemy says, I believe that culture is in a place that they will accept the fact <clears throat> of transsexual or transgender. doesn't matter that it doesn't make any sense. Till that environment, <clears throat> instead of holiness getting in the culture, culture killed holiness in the church. And the Lord said this, when salt no longer walks in its purpose, it gets thrown out like garbage <clears throat> on the ground. And men just begin to trample on it. The feet of the unbeliever begins to trample on that which was holy, and that which was righteous, and that which was pure, that which made this nation what it is. And the enemy began to trample on it. So now you got to shift over into another dimension, and you got to talk about feet. <clears throat> The reason that there is no respect in this hour pretty much across the board for especially Pentecostal church and righteousness and holiness is because we lost our ability to affect this generation because we have the form of God but no power. We talk about miracles, but we don't see them very often. This church being to some degree an exception. We talk about healing, but we're hooked on pharmaceutical drugs. We talk about peace while we pop volumes to, to manage our depression. We talk about healing while we're on nine different drugs for arthritis and heart disease and high blood pressure, but we'll sing our God is a healer and the world looks it up and says you're a joke and you get thrown out. God throws you out and men begin to trample on you. But God knew this day and the first prophecy that ever came out of the mouth of God dealing with mankind was he said, devil, let me tell you something. I see a day when you're going to try to get a hold of the feet of my people. He said, you know, you may bruise their heel. But he said, I'm going to tell you right now that there's somebody that's going to take his holy feet and he's going to put it on your head and he's going to crush you in the name of the Lord. I, I see a reversal in the Holy Ghost where God is declaring there is a change in posture by the Spirit of God. I feel the salt coming back to life in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, after 52 years, it should be. <clears throat> this is why so much of what God talks to us about deals with our posture and with feet. When you read Ephesians, God talks about this, <clears throat> that our position with Christ is that we are sitting. Your feet can be on the floor when you're sitting, but there's no strength. If you really want to get some pressure on it, you've got to grab the sides of the chair and hold yourself so you can get some pressure on it because sitting in the posture of rest means that you're not in struggle. 
So this is why the Bible talks about that we are sitting with Christ in heavenly places because in Christ there is no works. Everything God has already made provision for. <clears throat> with the unbeliever or the world, our posture is that we stand or are that we walk out our faith. We walk it out. But our posture with the enemy is that we stand, not sit. Not move, but we stand on what God has already given us. When the enemy begins to tread <clears throat> on the church, it is in direct opposition to what God ordained should happen between the enemy and the church. <clears throat> that our feet should be on the neck of the enemy instead of the enemy's feet on the neck of the church. Hallelujah. That where over the years I've heard such <clears throat> great stories of what God has done. I remember many, many years ago in uh, trying to remember... I think it was in, it, it was called Persia. There was a, <clears throat> an old man and his family. Of course, he was old then, but he was a young man then. But they were having house church, and communists ruled in that area. And as they were having church, <clears throat> soldiers came up with machine guns. And as they came out of the building, they began to open up fire with machine guns on on. Old Brother Urshan and his family. Or the, and, and the history says this. I saw, I saw the church that as that machine gun was leveled on him and the bullets are hitting him, all it did was make holes in his shirt, but the bullets did not penetrate his body. Why? Because there was salt. There was salt in the name of the Lord. I'm declaring to hell that 709 Rivergate Parkway is a salt pit. Hallelujah. Where the enemy cannot come against us in the name of the Lord. That we we will not give the United States of America back to the enemy, but we are declaring in the name of God, we are going to reverse this thing. We don't need a whole lot. God said, give me two or three that are gathered together in my name, and I will be in the midst of them. The Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runneth in and are safe. If you call upon him, you will not fear what man does to you. See, the enemy's trying to knock us off our feet with intimidation. One verse says this, he makes my feet like hind's feet. Hallelujah. And there is no, hardly any stronger weapon against the people of God than the intimidating spirit that comes against us. Intimidation doesn't actually have to make anything happen. It just gets up around you. It gets bustery, and, and it tries to flex itself and tries to make itself bigger than it looks. And it, all these threats come out, but no punches are thrown, and no one actually even touches you. But that thing gets up, and you're not used to it, and its breath is hot, and it's ugly, and you can smell it. And that thing's saying, let me tell you what's going to happen. What I did to your mama, I'm going to do to you. And what's in your bloodline is in your DNA. By the time I get done with you, it's going to be all over. That intimidation. That thing's trying to get you to bow down. Yeah. 
That's what happened with the three Hebrew children when, the, when Nebuchadnezzar raised up that, that large statue somewhere. Uh, I, I think it was over 100 feet tall. And he tells him to Israel, he says, you will bow down or else. See that over there? That's where I'm going to put you in the fiery furnace. Most of Israel, when they saw the furnace and they heard the threats, they never got in the fire. But when they felt it and they heard it, the Bible said they went to their knees and they begin to bow down and they begin to do obedience and they begin to worship this thing. Broke their spirits. But in the midst, hallelujah, of a crowd that had been knocked off their feet, there were three young men, hallelujah, that knew who God was. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Abednego, look at Shadrach. He said, I can't go down to my knees. Meshach said, I ain't going down either and they stood there and they would not bow I'm declaring in the name of the Lord don't go down don't go down don't go down don't bow down to whatever is coming against you you hold on to thus saith the Lord that in the last days the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former hold on because he's on his way thing was intimidating he was trying to destroy the salt think about it he already had 99.9 of the entire culture on its knees the only thing standing between salvation and slavery was three guys don't tell me that we got to have a Holy Ghost filled president in order to turn this nation around. I hope to God we do. I talked to a man yesterday on the phone that is on the ballot to run for president in the United States. And uh, I prayed with him on the phone. And he said, one of the things I want to do if I can be elected is he said, weekly, I want to have a live stream into every school and just pray with the students in the schools. Hallelujah. Listen, if God can take a speaker of the house out of nowhere and stick him, hallelujah, on national television and him begin to quote the Bible uh, while the Democrats are cringing uh, and don't like it uh, and they, don't, they, they can't handle it, uh, but God said uh, there's a little bit of salt left uh, in the political pool. Uh, so the Lord just reached over and he said it looks like some corruption uh, getting ready to get it the house so he said I'll take a little bit of salt and he took that man and he dropped him hallelujah right in the middle of corruption and when salt hit the atmosphere it began to quote the word of the Lord and God was glorified hallelujah We either we're making a decision right now. Are we going to our knees and we're going to throw in the towel? Are we going to give this nation up? Are we going to say we never thought it would be like this? We thought our little problems would be maybe some alcohol, some drugs, a little bit of corruption. We were prepared for this. But there is no power in the earth that can even stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Deuteronomy eleven twenty four. the Lord told Israel every place the soles of your feet shall tread upon shall be yours that means it doesn't matter what kind of land has been given back to the Palestinians by the Israelites under pressure? What God says belongs to Israel belongs to Israel. It don't matter what kind of war is being waged against the land of Israel. The Lord said, listen, you're messing with my homeland. This is where I'm coming back, and I'm going to live for a thousand years. And it's not going to be a Muslim rule country when Jesus Christ 
comes on a white horse, comes to the eastern gate and sets up kingship and begins to rule. I got news for you. There's a little bit of salt in the atmosphere. I got a declaration to tell you that there's some salt that hadn't lost its savor. There's some anointing that is breaking the yoke and God is alive and well on the throne. This is about reversal. This is about, because you can make salt salty again. It's a chemical process, but you can bring it back. God is doing something in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. And, you know, we're thinking in terms, boy, I shouldn't have wore this. All I got is a T-shirt on underneath, so I can't take it off. But... <clears throat> I can't unbutton it, though. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thought it was supposed to be 51 degrees today and raining, and <clears throat> we got an unsaved. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> All those of you online, just don't look. <clears throat> Hallelujah. See, we're thinking in terms of we just want to get back to where we were. God's saying, you're thinking too small. Hallelujah. Behold, I do a new thing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When you go to Muslim countries... Their religion affects their whole lifestyle. There are no porn stores in Saudi Arabia. There ain't nobody getting drunk in public in Muslim countries. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors, closed doors, because I know they're unregenerated, and so you can't control the basic instincts of human beings. But I am telling you this, their religion, at least visually, controls their environment. <clears throat> this is the only nation that is Holy Ghost filled or still believes in the Lord Jesus Christ where there is so much debauchery <clears throat> in the nation. You got a church right here, and you got a mile down the road. You got a, a, a house that's selling uh, porn, and you got another place that's, that's a nudie bar, and you got another place that's that. Uh, and everybody said, well, you know, it's just whatever you enjoy. No, I got to tell you that when you get a church, hallelujah, that has salt, and that salt comes out of two old women in their 80s. Hallelujah. That salt begins to come out of Jonathan Edwards. Uh, after three years of praying five hours a day, uh, something begins to happen in the Holy Ghost. Uh, God didn't raise you and I up just to sing, walk in the light, uh, and be preached till you get goosebumps. Uh, he raised us up, hallelujah, that we are going to penetrate uh, the very powers of darkness. Uh, we're going to pull down uh, the strongholds of hell. Uh, we're going to raise up some men and women in politics uh, that are going to lift up the name of Jesus uh, and declare uh, that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Uh, the Lord said, I ain't bowing down, uh, but every knee shall bow, uh, every tongue shall confess, uh, and everybody shall declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. I got news for the devil. I'm not intimidated by you. Uh, you can't give me cancer. Uh, you can't take what God's given me uh, because I am blood-bought uh, and there are angels uh, around me. Uh, so I got news for the enemy. We're coming after you. Uh, what you tried to do to us, uh, we're going to do to you uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we're going to hit you with the blood. Uh, we're going to hit you with the name. Uh, we're going to hit you with the anointing. Uh, and we're going to break the head of the enemy. <laughs> Psalms 8, 6 says, Thou hast given him dominion. 
has put all things under his feet. Psalms 91, 13, thou shalt trample the dragon under thy feet. Psalms 18, 38, my enemies have fallen under my feet. Romans 16, 20, the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. 2 Samuel 22, 34, God will protect the feet of his saints. Ephesians 6, having done all to stand, we just stand. When God is sending you someplace, your feet, hallelujah, will not swell, and your shoes will grow with your children's feet as they grow for 40 years in the wilderness. There is a divine provision, hallelujah, that God is releasing for you and I. Oh, if you knew what God has in store for you. Hallelujah. This discontent that we're feeling. It's the Lord saying, I'm drawing you. I'm disconnecting you from your past. I'm changing what you have been entertained by. What used to move you. What used to excite you. It's just boring. You go through channel after channel and nothing gets your attention. Why? Because there is a drawing of the Spirit of the Lord that said I'm putting salt back in you. I'm giving you back your effectiveness and you're going to change the world. Yeah. Hallelujah. For your prodigals may God release such a savor in your home that the next time they come to visit you, when they walk through the door, they just go to their knees and yet they begin to say, I, I got to get right with God and right in your own house. You see them being changed by the power of the Lord. Geographically, hallelujah, I'm loosing salt upon your children in the name of Jesus. May God begin to rise up out of your belly and there begin to be a release of a holy anointing anointing that looked at the devil and said, I am not bowing. In fact, you're going to bow to me. You're going to get down and declare they're a man and woman of God and I have no authority over them. Yeah. Too many of us are being wallowed around in the mouth of the enemy and he's going, Lord, that tastes pretty good. And instead of the enemy going, Phew. Can't handle that. Hallelujah. Too salty. Hallelujah. God called us salt. We didn't name ourselves. He said the church is going to change the world. Our problem is we are trying to assimilate that scripture by what we're looking at now instead of looking at what the scripture is prophesying to us by the power of God. I believe that the Lord is just bringing us to the end of our rope. That everything that God's going to do, he's going to get the glory. That when he does it, there will be nobody that we will look to and say, man, I tell you what, thank God for them. No, there is something happening. The Bible says that God raises up kings, he puts down kings. So don't tell me that God didn't have control over the political system of the last four years. If God wanted to be different, it would have been different. But the Lord withheld his hand because he was setting the stage that no longer are we looking to outside sources. But the Lord is saying, you are the salt of the earth. For those of you that work in ungodly environments, I pray right now the Holy Ghost would be so powerful in you that when you walk into your workspace, that you don't have to open up your Bible. You don't even have to pray out loud. You don't have to try to witness to anybody. But people just begin to weep. 
Hallelujah. It happened with Charles Finney when he walked into that factory and they are mocking what he has been preaching. But when he walked in, he didn't have to say anything. And all of a sudden, the girl that had been mocking began to weep and the spirit of repentance hit the factory. They quit working at their machines. The manager stood back. The Holy Ghost began to flood. They began to go to their knees and be repentant and filled with the Spirit of God. Know this, saith the Lord, I have saved my best for last. There is a wind of a savor. I'm going to cause you to be the fragrance of my presence in the atmosphere. I am loosing the Spirit of God. Get your eyes off of the natural, saith the Lord, and begin to look unto me. I am the author. I am the finisher of your faith. Will you praise me in the middle of the valley? Will you praise me in the middle of pain? Will you praise me in the middle of disappointment? Because your praise is going to be your deliverance. Stand with me. Instead of the enemy trampling on us, we're going to trample on him. He's had his best shot. Hallelujah, he's had his best shot. Say, how do you know it, Brother Kent? I'm looking at maybe the greatest miracle that I've ever seen in 52 years of ministry to go from 100 people in three years to this. I tell the God all the time, you amaze me. You amaze me. I don't know where y'all came from, but I'm so glad you did. But I can tell you this. If God can do this, if he can do 600 people at the old place in five weeks when he's ready, you're going to drive up and say, oh, my God, what's happened? Can't find a parking spot. All 1,500 spaces are filled up. You had got to stand out in the outside area because the whole balcony's filled. You think, was there a conference? Is they got a special speaker? And all it is is that sovereign glory of God, the salt. The Lord just reached over heaven. He said, they just need a little salt. God is getting ready to sprinkle the church on the earth. In the last day, saith the Lord, I will what? Pour out my spirit on flesh. This flesh is corrupt. Putrication, putrification. God said, I'm going to put the church on it. Hallelujah. As he's putting the church on it. It begins to stop that corruption. It reverses. Hallelujah. And righteousness begins to come forth. And holiness begins to come forth. The power of God begins to be released in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> I'm pulling you out of your hole right now. Hallelujah. I'm pulling some of you out of the hole that the enemies tried to get you in. Some of you have been knocked to your knees. And the enemy's saying, you just need to go ahead and worship me. It's the only way you'll save yourself. And God's saying, no, I'm reaching down. And I'm going to get a hold of you by your collar. And I'm pulling you up. And I'm saying, stand up, sir. Stand up, ma'am. You will not bow down to the enemy's spirit. But you hold on you get up. This is why the Lord said, Upon this rock will I build my church and the gates, the authority of hell shall not prevail, win, conquer the church. In the midst of cultural change, God has raised up a transient people just like he did Israel we've never had our own place but we're headed home hallelujah hallelujah what are you doing I'm treading on my enemy 
I got tired of being stepped on, so I stood up. And I went back to Genesis and I said, I'm going to have holy feet. What are we doing today? I've got my foot on the neck of the devil. And I'm going to say, how do you like that? You may have bruised my heel, but I am going to cross your head. My children, my finances, my home, my marriage, my nation, my hope, my dreams are coming back because we will not bow. You kneel, you're in slavery. You don't bow. You see God in his greatest glory in the midst of the impossible. Prayer partners, come quickly. Hallelujah. I feel that the Lord is trying to shift us. This is no time to be resting. I know subjectively we are sitting with Christ in heavenly places, but I hear the sound of war. Hallelujah, I hear the sound of war in the Holy Ghost. We hear the sound of war in the name of Jesus. And I am loosing on you today a righteous anger in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You need to get mad at the enemy. Mandala Bobo Sunday. Hallelujah. You need to begin to quote the word. You need to get your praise back. You need to let your shout come up out of your spirit. You need to begin to sing. There is no God like my God. There is